Welcome back to the Tokyo Show with your host, Nicholas Pettis. Today, we are doing chapter six of the Blue-Eyed Samurai. So, we're going to pick off where we left last time. I'm just going to go straight into it. You guys ready? Sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. <laughs> okay, so I spent the next month praying that it would get a chance to do Kumite with Todd before he would get himself kicked out, but it was not to be. One day, he was supposed to be working in the office when Sosa had walked in to find him sitting with his feet planted up on the table. Yeah, this is actually a true story. He was uh, just uh, drinking a cup of coffee on Sosa's desk with his feet up on Sosa's desk. So the first thing Sosa had said was, that's it, you're out of here. Anyway, he called up the Australian branch shift and told him to come and pick up his boy. Todd, being as stubborn as he was, just stayed in the dorm, figuring out that this would blow over soon. He actually thought that he would not get kicked out. But he did get kicked out. <laughs> Much to the enjoyment of all us other Uchideshi, because we were, at that point, completely fed up with him. Anyway, he ended up packing up his things, and I ended up never getting a chance to have Kumite with him. And you know what? Even till this day, I still regret that. I would like to have kicked his ass. Honestly, he really deserved the hiding, that guy. Anyway, it is what it is, you know, um, and it's like 30 years ago, so who cares anyway? Uh, fighting for honor in the dojo is never really worth it. Uh, it had been, if it had been in a tournament where everyone could see it happen, then there would be some kind of value to this. But in the dojo, like really, what really happened, who really did what, who really did anything at all, is only down to the people who were there at that time. So it is what it is. There are many urban legends about street fights and many urban legends about, you know, someone kicking someone else's ass in the dojo or, you know. But the truth is, if you cannot do it in a tournament, then you really can't do it. It's that simple. So uh, all those gym champions that are out there and just um, feel that they are, uh, you know, legends all by themselves, let's just uh, get it straight right now that if you haven't done it in a tournament, then you haven't done it at all. And that's how I look at it. That's how I will always see it. And some kid like this, this guy Todd here, uh, who came in and almost like ruined my experience as a Uchideshi, I am actually glad to say that he got kicked out for being such a uh, unfit uh, material for being an Uchideshi. Um, only the serious people survive on this one. Anyway, so at this point, it was then just Mahashi and I that were left in the dorm. Uh, the boys, the other big boys had run away during the night uh, a few weeks earlier. And after that, everyone uh, hadn't heard anything from where they went. Uh, I was starting to pick up a few words in Japanese here and there. And sometimes at night, LIGO would teach me uh, some Japanese. And this was actually really helpful. Uh, thank you for that, LIGO. You really were uh, a good friend back then. Uh, Mahashi would also take the time to teach me some things here and there. And he would always correct me whenever I said something wrong i don't remember at what kind of rate i'd learned to speak japanese but within a year i had a pretty good conversation level so saturday evening was reserved for the dinner with sosai and all his uchideshi it was a feast worthy of like kings honestly uh there would be a deep fried pork chop a tonkatsu a whole flat fish, which is like a himono, like a, a dried kind of fish thing, uh, fried to a crisp. And then there would be a big plate of chopped salad and a big bowl of rice and then also a big bowl of chicken soup, which is called mizutaki. Now, I'm going to go off script once again here. Um, and this is how it is, right? So we're sitting... Uh, for <laughs> we're sitting at the table, right, all the way down, up at the end, at the head of the table. Sosai would come in and sit down, and he would watch all the uchideshi eat, right? So there would be the third-year students, the second-year students, and then the foreign students or the first-year students way at the back. Now, I'm going to uh, try and reminisce a little bit on how it is to have dinner with Sosai. Uh, at first, we all wait for Solsai over at Hombu um, and for him to come down from his office. And it uh, starts about uh, 6.30. So he comes down. We're all lined up outside Hombu, standing there like this, waiting for him. When he comes out, everyone goes, Solsai ni hey, os! And everyone does a big os. Solsai comes out like this. Ooh, mm, he's wearing his hat. Really nonchalant with a Hawaiian shirt often. And we then all walk together back to uh, the dormitory now remember we believed that he was a living god so it was forbidden to walk on his on his shadow so we're following him around the dorm and there and it's you know uh, light evening so the sun is kind of going down and stuff like that and there's this um ominous uh, you know aura about the whole situation it's it really feel like we're escorting a god into our uh, dormitory he comes in and sits at the end of the table and then everyone sits there waits for him and says oh and he goes uh, let's eat and then everyone goes oh 
and then it's completely silent, right? So the first time I had the dinner with salsa, and this is hilarious, I was told by my senpai, you have to eat three bowls of rice and three bowls of chicken soup and everything else that's on your table. So you have this uh, deep fried pork on one side, you got this like mountain of chopped salad, right? And then you've got a fish and then you've got the two massive bowls of both rice. And the bowls, they come like this, like at the topping of rice, like not just a flat bowl of rice, but like a mountain of rice. So um, I wanted to win. Like I just wanted to win at everything, right? So I thought it was a game. Uh, we sit down, we, uh, we start eating, right? And I'm like eating faster than everyone else. And I was wondering, like, it was so uh, weird, right? Because I was the first one to go in and take an extra bowl of rice. And then I was the first one to take an extra bowl of chicken soup, right? They have these massive pots on, on the table, right? And then so I finished it and I was like, yeah, man, this is great. This is great. I'm winning, right? And then I, so I go in for the, the third bowl of rice and the third bowl of chicken soup, right? And then before anyone else, no one else had even, I think no one else had taken an extra bowl at that point. And we're like 30 minutes into the dinner, I think. And then so I finished my third, my, my third uh, bowl of rice and my third bowl of chicken soup. And I'm like, put my chopsticks down. I'm like, yeah, I did it. I won, right? And then I sit down like that. And then suddenly I hear this booming voice. Like everyone's completely quiet, by the way. He goes, mm, da costa. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, da costa. Now, I got to explain this. Uh, back in the day, there was a very famous British fighter called Nicolas da Costa. And in the world tournament, he had some incredible results, right? And so, uh, Sosa had not really learned my name, but I guess that he, like, you know, made the reference to Nicolas da Costa and me being Nicolas. So, he called me da Costa. And that went on for quite a while, actually. It's very funny. Um, so, anyway, he goes, mm, da Costa. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even say oh, it's like, like one of my senpais had to kick me under the under the table say he's talking to you man and I was like oh and at that time this is like just a few weeks into Japan right I didn't speak Japanese so I didn't know what was going on uh, and it's like so I stand up I'm like oh say so I just apologize for whatever I did wrong you know and he goes you know he's sitting there with his chopstick not his chopstick his little toothpick going and I'm like that literally means what's wrong with you and I'm like Obviously, I didn't understand anything. And then uh, he figured out that there was this awkward silence. It was like, okay, this guy doesn't understand what's going on. So he goes, Okawari shinasai. And then my senpai stood up with a big smile on his face, grabbed my bowl, and then started filling rice into the bowl again and pick up my other bowl and fill it up with another chicken soup bowl. I was like, oh my God, he told me to get another bowl. I was like, I was so full. I was so full in my stomach. I was about to throw up. And this actually really happened. Some Uchida, she actually really threw up on the table. And then they would just wipe it up and uh, just go and grab another bowl. Um, I thought I was going to die. Uh, by that time, I think we're about an hour into the dinner. And like, I'm like, I just can't finish it. Like I... You know, I couldn't finish. I was like one like little rice corn at a time. I was like about to cry. And there was this awkward silence that went on for at least 10 more minutes where no one is like eating and they're like just pretending that they're eating. I was seeing senpais with an empty bowl like facing the other way from Soul Side Soul and, and just pretending to eat. I thought it was incredible. Like that's how much he used to make us eat. Um, this would literally go on every week on every Saturday. And then like, so eventually, you know, he's like, okay, pack it away so then we pack everything away and then the cakes come out and i was like are you kidding me like during summertime there would be like watermelon coming out and it's just like oh my god how much food are we eating i thought we were su sumotori or something like that uh, i'm gonna cut into the story again like i keep doing this i'm not really sure that this is an audio book at all but anyway um he would tell us every dinner he would ask the the religiously he would ask these questions all the time um oi da costa again calling me da costa uh, how heavy are you now? And I'd be like, uh, after a couple of months, I know what this conversation went on about. I'd be like, and I'd be like, yes, I'm uh, 72 kilos now. And he goes, mm, and I was like, I was 72 kilos when I came. It's like, mm, and he'd be like, you know what? You're the same weight as you are now. You need to gain five kilos. And he would often tell us, if you become one kilo heavier, you become one kilo stronger. So you kids need to go out there and gain some weight and get stronger. And the thing is, when a God, a living God tells you that, you honestly will do anything to do that. So uh, within the first six months, I gained uh, about five kilos. And so we got to that conversation like on a regular basis. And the first time Sosa got to that, he's like, uh, the first time I was proud to say I gained five kilos. I was like, I was like, yes, I'm now 77 kilos. And he goes, mm, and I was like, how heavy were you when you got here? I was like, 
I was 72. And he goes, Oh, いいですね。しかし、あと5キロ太りなさい。And he'd go, Oh, but you have to gain another 5 kilos. Now, this conversation literally goes on for three years. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I went from 72 kilos to 102 kilos at the end. I gained literally 30 kilos during those three years.、Um, and it's a funny story, so I'm going to jump ahead to it because you know, I'm not going to do this any other time. You might as well hear it now.、Uh, I was a third year student at the time. And s o s a i comes in. So I'm up at the top. I'm the, the one that you know, gives him his, you know, the shoe, shoelace,、uh, shoe, what do you call this, shoehorn for when he's going to put his shoes on at the end of the dinner and everything. And so we finish the dinner. You know, I'm proudly, I know how to pace myself during the dinner、oh, after three years of doing it. You know, so I'm eating a lot, you know, and it's all good. You know, I want to get big and everything. I had, had broken a leg、uh, in a tournament, in the Old Japan tournament. I had a, a fractured、uh, shin bone. Uh, so I was out of,、uh, out of commission there for a while. Yeah, I broke a lot of bones while I was training there.、Um, and um, so I couldn't really work out properly、uh, for about a month or a month and a half or whatever it was. And so at that time, I was like, this is it. You know, I went from 70, not 70, I went from 96 kilos to 102 kilos in like that one, one month or something, right? So it was like a five, six kilo gain within like a month or two. And it was crazy. I was like huge, right? And、um, so s o s a i s we finished that dinner. And this is the last time I had a dinner with s o s a i by the way. And、uh, on the way out, I'm standing there holding the shoehorn. I go, oh, s o s a i do so. And by this time, I spoke、uh, fluent Japanese pretty much.、Um, and he goes, He touches me, he goes, しし、ね、And he goes, You, you really got big, eh? And he goes,、uh, How heavy are you now? And I'm like, I was super proud, right? Because he had told me for three years, every time I told him at, at, at 85, he goes, Oh, you need another five kilos. At 90 kilos, like, you need another five kilos. At 95 kilos, he's like, You need another five kilos. And so I was 102. So I was like, I had completely done exactly what he told me to. And I was super proud. So I goes, Oh, I'm 102 kilos. And he goes, Hmm. And、he's looking at me, sizing me up and down. He goes, I was like, How heavy were you when you came here? I was like,、ah, Seriously, this conversation went on for three years. And so, <laughs> so I go, And I was super proud, right? I was like, Yeah. And he goes,、mm. <laughs> He goes, Oh, but you got too fat. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Oh, he had a very keen eye for that. Yeah.、Um, the truth is, I was at 102 kilos. I was too big. And I was like, yeah, it's not healthy.、Uh, currently, right now, I'm just at 100 kilos. So I'm about the same size as I was back then, which is kind of hilarious.、Um, once I started back training again,、uh, the body went down to a natural 96, 97 kilos. And that was pretty much my fighting weight until I started the K1. Okay, that was the so side dinner that went completely off script here. I'm going to skip ahead to it here.、Uh, let's see how we go. Uh, yeah, during the colder months, it would be cakes and green tea, and during the hot summer months, it'd w o u l be watermelon. It was still cold enough for us to get the cakes, and being a first year, we were not allowed to go out and buy anything from the store, so I was really craving something sweet, and so the cakes really made my mouth water. But I was full to the brim, and even walking was painful.、Uh, it was like going through a mental struggle. I had no idea、uh, that eating that much food could be so hard for me. But there were three cakes in front of me, and hey, why not? It was yummy. It was like super yummy. I wanted to cry, but after all that time for craving sweets, I just didn't feel I was up for it. I didn't think I could be able to fit another bit in my,、uh, bit, a bite in my mouth. But once again, there was no escaping. I knew I would have to eat it. And surprisingly, it, did, it went down nice and smoothly. It was nice to get some sweets, but the pleasure、uh, was kind of destroyed by the fact that I was about to throw up from eating so much from the dinner.、Uh, we had to open our waistbands、um, during those dinners every time, actually. Yeah, and uh, honestly, uh, this was actually the Soul Side Dinner episode that I wanted to go over in today's episode.、Um, next time, we're going to go into chapter seven. And、uh, all I want to say is I hope that you enjoyed what you watched today and that you come back and watch the next of the story. Thank you very much for watching the Tokyo Show today with your host, Nicholas Curtis. <laughs>